Hi class, we're going to be finishing up the axial skeleton. We've done the bones of the skull, the bones of the vertebral column, and now we're going to be doing the bones of the thoracic cage. Always remember, just do your quick little drawing so you don't get mixed up when you have a lecture exam or a lab practical and it asks you if this bone is from the axial or the appendicular skeleton. We'll be doing the appendicular skeleton next. Everything highlighted in green here is the axial skeleton. Everything still white is the appendicular skeleton. How do you remember? Axial skeleton, you just do your drawing. Bones of the skull, bones of the vertebral column, and this line is representing the bones of the thoracic cage. You do have a little hyoid bone up here, which is part of the axial skeleton, um, but we're not going to talk about that. So we've done the bones of the skull, we've done the bones of the vertebral column, so next we are doing the bones of the thoracic cage. So let's get started. Make sure while you are looking at this video, you are following along with your master list in front of you. It would also help to have a textbook in front of you to help you visualize all these things. So let's just do um, the rib cage. And let's isolate. So here is the rib cage. Well, what we're going to start with is the sternum. So if you look at your master list, we're going to be doing the sternum. So hmm, let's see if I can just get the. I just want the sternum. Um, I just want the sternum. How can I just get the sternum? Let me pause this and just get the sternum. Okay, now we've got just the sternum, commonly known as the breastbone. So, once again, nothing simple. So the sternum is made up of three bones. This top bone is the manubrium, manubrium. Here is the body, and here is the xiphoid process. So these bones all fuse to make the sternum. So let's start with the manubrium. What do you need to know on your manubrium? Now up here we have this notch. Now if you put your finger right in this notch, we did this in class, you can feel this little notch. This is the jugular or sternal notch. And then on either side of the manubrium, you're going to have another notch here and another notch here. These are the clavicular notches. So you can see it here is a, cl a clavicular notch. Here is a clavicular notch. Now this is where the clavicles, we haven't done the clavicles yet, but the clavicles are part of the appendicular skeleton and the clavicles are going to be articulating with the axial skeleton at these clavicular notches. So clavicular notch, clavicular notch is one for each of the clavicles. And then you are going to be having um, costal notches. Now when it says costal we're talking about the costal cartilage. Remember when you look at a skeleton you are saying cartilage is attached to the to the sternum. Not rib, not hard bone, but cartilage. So you're going to have seven of them. One, two, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven costal notches where um, the cartilage is going to be articulating with the sternum. So that's basically the parts of the manubrium you need to know. Now, when we get to the body, where the body and the manubrium fuse together, this is an, an important area. And you can actually feel this. 
if you come down, if you palpate, which means if you can feel your your jugular notch and just go down, you'll feel like a ridge. It's real easy to feel, especially in males where the ridge is, is, a, is bigger than in females. You'll come to a ridge here. And this is very important clinically because this ridge, it has a specific name. It's called the sternal angle. The sternal angle is where the manubrium and the body have fused together, but it has something clinically that's important for us. If you look at your textbook, which I hope you're doing, you will see that the costal cartilage of rib number two is coming off of this area right here at the sternal angle. So you're going to have rib number two coming off of here and here, one on each side. This is important clinically because once you find the sternal angle, you can just go out laterally and you know that's rib number two. And then you can palpate down. You can palpate rib number three, rib number four, five, six, seven. You can just palpate down and find the ribs. So an important clinical area, the sternal angle, the, the fusion of the manubrium with the body, and it is where rib number two comes out. Um, so what else do we need to know? I think that's, that's about it. That's just the sternum and then the xiphoid process at the, at the very bottom. Ooh, didn't want to do that, the xiphoid process. So that is your sternum. So now let's look at a rib. So we're going to first just start at, and look at the, all the ribs, the rib cage. We, we know we have 12 pairs of ribs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve pairs of ribs. We know we have seven costal notches on our our sternum that is where the rib is going to be um, articulating with the costal cartilage into the bone of the sternum so we are going to have what we call seven true ribs seven true ribs why are they called true ribs because they articulate directly to the sternum through a costal cartilage into the sternum. Seven costal notches, seven true ribs. We On this um, app, we cannot see the cartilage. It's been taken away. We're just looking at bone. So make sure you do see this on a, in a textbook so you can see the costal cartilage Seven true ribs, they are articulating directly from um, the rib goes into the costal cartilage and it articulates directly into the sternum. And then we have false ribs. Now false ribs are going to be ribs let's see, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. False ribs, all that means is they do not have direct attachment into the sternum via the costal cartilage. That sounds confusing, I know. And sometimes when you look at it, it doesn't really clarify it for you either. But if you look at in, in the classroom, I will help you see this, but you will see ribs. Let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're going to have 8, 9, and 10. So 8, 9, and 10 are false ribs. But 8, 9, and 10 still will indirectly attach via costal cartilage into the sternum. If you look at the model in, in the classroom, you will see ribs 8, 9, and 10. They do go into costal cartilage. But that costal cartilage is going to find its way into the costal cartilage of number seven. So when you see that, it's not a direct attachment of ribs eight, nine, and ten 
into the costal cartilage. It's an indirect attachment into the costal cartilage of number seven. So it just means it's an indirect attachment. Now ribs 11 and 12, these do not articulate, they do not attach to costal cartilage at all. There is no attachment to costal cartilage. They call ribs 11 and 12 floating ribs. Floating ribs, they only attach to the thoracic vertebrae in the back, but these have no costal cartilage attachment at all. At all. These ribs are for protection because your kidneys are right under here. So if you have a kidney infection or the doctor's checking your kidney, sometimes you'll see them um, pounding on the back right up here and they are just checking for any kidney tenderness or discomfort. Floating ribs. So those are the floating ribs, but what do they all have in common? They all attach to our thoracic vertebrae. How many thoracic vertebrae do we have? Twelve. How many pairs of ribs? Twelve. So they all attach to thoracic vertebrae. So now let's just kind of isolate um, one, uh, one rib. Let me pause this and get that set up. So here we have one rib isolated with its thoracic vertebra. Just want to kind of go through some of the main features of, of a rib. Now, uh, I don't think we can see it on here. Let me see if I can get a little bit closer. Woo! I do not see it. But in class, I showed you I showed you the real ribs. Always use the real ribs. We have plastic ones too. But look at the real ribs. The detail on the real ribs is much easier to see. So when you pick up a rib, remember you are going to have to tell, tell me if it's a right rib or, or a left rib. You pick it up, you look at the inside, the internal surface of the rib, and you can't see it here, but you are going to see a groove. A groove down here. It's the costal groove. The costal groove is always facing down. The costal groove is always facing down. And then you are going to be coming, you're going to be looking for the sternal end of the rib. The sternal end is usually jagged because it is it's called the sternal end because eventually it's going to be going to the sternum, but in most cases it's going to costal cartilage. So when you see it on a real rib, this will usually be jagged. It looks kind of broken up a little bit because the costal cartilage has is, is been removed. It's no longer there, so it's jagged. So that's going to be the sternal end. The sternal end is always facing the front side, and in the back you're going to have the part that is articulating with the thoracic vertebra. So this is going to be called the head, this thickened back end. Um, that's the head. So this is all the vertebral end. This is the head. This is going to be the neck. And then this is going to be, oops, don't want to do that. You're going to see a bump here. That is called the tubercle. Tubercle. It's a little bump here. So the head of the rib is articulating with the body of the thoracic of its thoracic vertebra. And then you're going to be seeing this little tubercle that's coming in contact with the transverse process where it's articulating. So this is a nice snug fit here. If you get a, a, a rib that fits with the thoracic vertebra, you will see this. We'll do this in class. And remember, for a lab practical, for my students, you need to be able to do this to show me how a rib artic articulates with a thoracic vertebra. So those are the main parts of the rib. Um, there's something else on your master list. You just have the 
let's see, you got the sternal end, which is down here. The body or the shaft, this is just this area, the body of the shaft is here. The angle is where it kind of makes this little curve. The tubercle is this bump. The neck, right here, and here's the head. And the articular facets, well, here you can't see them, but they are articulating with the, the vertebra that it's attached to. So make sure you understand that and you can see that. It's much easier if you have a real rib. Just pick it up, figure out, is it a right or left rib? Try it on yourself, and then see if you can articulate it with a, a thoracic vertebra. And I think that's it for our our thoracic cage so we have now completed the axial skeleton so make sure you go through your master list go through all these bones again um, and make sure you know their landmarks and study them not with your worksheets study them with the real bones in the class or with our bones that we have down in the BRC so onward to the appendicular skeleton.